So this is the point where you say, what are we doing to today, Jim? <laughs> what are we doing today, Jim? We are going out to a Honda CB600 Hornet, an old one. Guy rang me, long story, there's always a long story, isn't that? Long story short, um, I've got to remember how to get to this guy's house as well. Uh, so the guy rang me, he'd been, this bike's been fine, been running fine, I serviced it last year at some point for him. He's been running this bike um, period, periodically through the winter, which is always a bad idea. And then he, it had stood for the last couple of months and he'd come to get it going and it wouldn't start, that's all I knew. And he tried to bump start, he lives at the top of this big steep hill, and he tried to bump start it down the hill and it, he hadn't been able to get it going. And it was stuck at the bottom of the hill. So he called me out and I went out to it. Long story short, looks like it isn't, well, it, it isn't charging. Um, and it's a regulator rectifier problem. And I thought I'd just share, because it's a like properly in the wild actual job. I just thought I'd bring Benji along and sort of share my thought process with you guys as I'm fixing it. Sorry, I'm trying to drive and Sorry, Ben. I'm trying to not crash the yeah, van. Can, 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 you, uh, can you stay in frame stay, as stay you're driving? Stay in frame whilst you're trying to be safe and driving. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so you're coming along. Just uh, Ben's going to film me, just like almost real time. I'll show you what my. Uh, uh, I know what's wrong with it now. Obviously, I've, this is the second visit, so I've got some parts with me. But I'll explain my my diagnostic process when I first got to it, and then I'll show you the fix. That's the plan. Cool. So this is the bottom of the hill where the guy, because the guy, this this hill goes on forever. And this guy, his bike was parked against that wall there when it came out to it originally. So he, he tried bump starting it multiple times coming down this hill, and basically the battery was the battery was so flat that there was just you know there was nothing for the ignition system at all, so it wouldn't wouldn't start, and obviously it wasn't charging. So anyway, you get the idea. Couldn't start it called me out. Isn't it weird that when you're driving along, like this is quite a steep hill now, but I bet on camera it looks like a flat road. Yeah. See 25%. Oh, it's getting steeper here. It is getting steeper. Oh yeah. That's pretty steep. If I, if I point the camera down, I know it still looks flat. <laughs> <laughs> so is it a tank off thing then, is it? Hang on, Benji. Uh, what I'll do is I want to put the reg rec back on it, and we'll go. We'll start then. Fair enough. See what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just, and that way I can just start at the beginning. Start at the beginning, yeah. Are you feel me, Benji? Yeah. Right. So when I came to it, it was all together. Um, I've obviously. Anyway, let me explain my thought process when I got to it. So when I got to it, bring your camera over here. So it's a bit dirty, but very dim very dim neutral and oil light and when you push the start button we've talked about that buzzing sound haven't we before yeah in fact there isn't even enough power now when i push the start button the lights are dimming the solenoid isn't even clicking so first thing to do in this scenario is just get a voltmeter and check the battery which i'll do now it's going to be reflecty isn't it you're going to be able to see this well we'll find out in a minute Volts uh, uh, uh. DC. So I already know the battery is not happy, but let's just see what voltage is in it. Holy moly! So 10.8 volts. It's definitely dead that battery. And what happened? Look what happens when I push the start button. So I push the start button. Sorry. Yeah, that battery is not for this light anymore. Eight volts, that's never coming back to life. Um, there's an argument, you could, you could maybe trickle charge it and try and... What am I trying to say? I know that this battery's eight or nine years old. Um, and it's that low, I'm just I'm putting a new battery on it because I don't want to have to come back to it. Uh, right, so, I came to it. This is like a week ago, came to it, flat battery, so I was like, right, okay, get a jump pack, let's just start it and make sure it's just the battery. 
So if I put a jump pack on it, start the engine, make sure it's charging okay, and then it's just, just needs a new battery and then job done. So let me get my jump pack. Recognize this, Benji? I do. <laughs> okay. So uh, there's a vacuum pipe that needs blocking up. Let's block it with. Hopefully, there's enough fuel in the carbs to run it for a minute. Although, I probably am going to have to put fuel to it because I want to show you other stuff. Right, so. If I hook the, I'll leave the jump pack connected. Look at that battery voltage, right? So that's just, if I rev the engine, not a sausage, no chargey. So in that scenario, my next logic the next logical step this is not how to i'm just letting you follow my thought process as i'm doing like a job out in the wild which is the point of this uh video so my next the, there's a few different ways you could go the way i always go is i go to the generator plug on these which is around this side they have a habit of uh burning out these connections so this wire here comes from the generator on this cover they have a habit of getting hot and burning out the connector so you need to eyeball the connector and see if it's in good condition which it is so the next thing because i'm here already just going to check check ac voltage we've done this in the anatomy of a charging system video um i'll put the link to that in the description of this video but next thing is check ac voltage on these this three phase generator so turn the meter to AC, remember not DC. If you leave your meter on DC, you've been testing the battery, which is DC. If you leave your meter on DC, you're gonna get some wonky readings and it's all not gonna make sense. So meter to AC and check the voltage coming out of here on the three phases. So we need AC. Cool. So little spiky probes, they're much easier than the normal, Yeah. Check. you know what I mean? Right. So that's one of the phases and then up here Benji. And then move one of the connectors to the other phase Okay, and then the voltage. That's good. And then move this one along one. Do that phase. Just rev it a bit. Okay. And then move this one to this one. Okay, look there. Won't even bother revving it. And then what I do is and I've talked about this in the past. I sort of mo I move this one to the other phase and then do these two as well. I won't bother showing you. So you go, let's turn this row off. So when you're testing, this is just a logical way I make sure that I'm getting all possible outcomes. So I, one in there, yeah? yeah? Then measure this one and this one. And then I move that to there. And then I measure this one and this one. And then I move that to there and I measure this I one and this one. All so the combinations. You know, yeah, all the combinations. <coughs> I don't want to go down that rabbit hole, but it's a way of making sure you've got all the phases covered. Um, right, and then the, the other thing I do, I, I'm pretty confident that this generator is okay. Um, let me just show you a, a better way of looking at, uh, at the generator and getting a better picture of what's going on with the generator, just in case there's some oddity to it. So if we go to, uh, where are we going? If we go to lab scope, uh, and we just go DC, so one a single channel basically. And we connect it back up. Let's start the engine back up. 
Wow, okay. Slight uh, problem. Actually, what I'll do is, uh, if I go to... Uh, two-channel lab scope, it's probably set differently to what I normally use. Right, so you can see the AC sine wave coming out of the generator. Yeah. And if you... So we're looking here, what are we looking? Uh, peak to peak. What's that, 80 volts? Can't see the screen probably. Yeah, 80 volts peak to peak. As I rev it, obviously the frequency increases, but the amplitude also gets bigger. Um, I won't show you all the other phases, but they're all identical because I've already checked them. So what you find if you've got a slightly weak phase, um, the frequency will increase, but the amplitude won't. Do you see what I mean? The amplitude yep, yep. won't increase as much so that's a good way and then you go through all three phases and you can compare them and it's a two channel scope so if you really wanted to you could look at two at the same time if you think you've got a suspect phase you could actually look at the suspect one and one of the ones you think is good and and there's more to it than that because that waveform they say it says i think i covered this in the charging system video but the the sine wave you're seeing there is actually made up of two of the, there's three sets of windings in the generator. Yeah. That sine wave you're seeing there is made up of two sets of windings. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, is that only because you're only probing to right? No, because okay. I'm, the way they're wound, they're, I, I go into this in the charging system video about different ways of winding generators. So we'll put a star C and C charging yeah, video here. Star, star and delta configuration, the way they're wound, it, it, it will make sense if you watch the, if you're really interested in this subject, go and watch the anatomy of a charging system, a charging system video, because I, I properly nerd out on that. Yeah, okay. This is just an in the wild, just showing you like a day-to-day -day kind of job. Anyway, so we know the generator's good. We know the battery's not charging. So the next logical thing is regulator rectifier. So I'll show you where I go next, if you like. Cool. What are you doing, Jim? <laughs> it's pretty bodgy, you shouldn't really be filming this. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. I normally hook a little external fuel tank up to it, but Max, the owner of the bike, just handed me a little bottle of petrol and uh, just put a little funnel in the fuel line. Just fill the carbs back up so we can run it a little bit more. Oh, thank you, mate. Because my dairy can is empty. Right, so I've connected the generator back up down the end. So the regulator rectifier is this little thing here. So what we do is we'll disconnect it so we can get to the connection. These are uh, a really, really common point of failure on these. They, um, they don't have any heat sink and they seem to overheat and fail quite, quite uh, regularly. Right, so, go on, you can ask the question then, we. I was just going to mention was it, there was an intake of the, world. Is this yeah, the yeah. kind of thing that this is exactly the sort of thing electrics yeah. world would supply. You're going to hate on me because I haven't got an electrics world regulator rectifier. <laughs> they didn't have one in stock, oh, right, okay. which is weird. Well, um, so I got a Larson one, which is a cheaper one, and Max will be happy because it's not as expensive. So uh, plug that again. Make sure there's no burniness on the connector. Um, so these three yellow wires are the same three yellow wires that are coming from the generator down there. Sure. Yeah. We need to be certain that there's no breaking continuity between the generator connector and here. So the quickest and easiest way of doing that is to do the same test again. Okay. Do you see what I mean? And this, this is literally just testing it's, the it's, wire. It's a, it? Yeah, basically we're, we're going to be testing continuity. I'm not even going to show it on camera, yeah, there's no point, but I, I've already done it but just basically identical to the test we just did just down there the just take the wiring out of the equation um, and then power and ground is really important so we need basically this red and white here is positive battery yeah and that's and that's ground and that's earth so we can go to we put the meter to DC um, he says we don't want a scope we want a digital meter in DC volts and what we can do we could get we could get complicated and do voltage drop tests along the so let's just well, I'm not going to go into that because I know it's all fine so we, we'll just check battery voltage which is 12.26 get a shot of that Benji on the meter down there so battery voltage 12.26 
12.23, something like that, yeah. And then we, we'll do the same test up here. Let's see what we get. 12.22, so that's absolutely fine. There's, there's a, you know, a, a couple of hundred millivolt drop across the, probably across the positive. So if we went positive to positive, Not even showing we go ground anyway let's not get into voltage drop testing that's not what this is about so i'm confident that i've got three phase ac here at the generator and i've got a battery positive and an earth so we can reasonably assume from that that it's a regulator rectifier that's failed given that they always fail anyway and you can this one doesn't smell too bad sometimes they smell really burnt and it might be you know, the battery voltage is so low it might be that there's been a leaky diode because um, these these wires even without the ignition on it's always live this wire this is basically connected to the battery all the time this positive so if there's a leaky diode even with the ignition off it'll and we could test for that we could put an amp clamp on and or an amp meter but i'm not just yeah this is a real world fix so we're not getting into detail we don't need to get into right new reg rec right so new reg rec a larson one a jmp one which is a Chinese one. It comes with the connector, a little bit like the Electrics World one, because they 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 often burn the connector out because um, it's a point of resistance. But in this case, it's fine. So, and these, if you notice, it's got some heat sink on it compared to the original. So it's got a little bit more heat dispersion. This design, it gets rid of most of, most of its heat through the back here into the frame because it's right. bolted directly onto the frame. You know what I mean. So a lot of you are going to be thinking, so why are you not testing the diode pack in the, in the Reg Rec gym? Well, there isn't any need. Well, I was going to ask that. <laughs> no, you weren't. <laughs> it's, uh, the generator was working. It's got AC to the reg rec. It's got a battery, a good earth and a positive. It's, it has to be the regulator rectifier. It's just, that's just how it is. You, you know, you kind of, when you do it all the time, you learn the shortcuts and you know what tends to go wrong. You know, you, when you've seen it a hundred times before, probably literally a hundred times before, you know, almost before you put a meter to it, what's wrong with it. So, starter up, um, see if it's charging. Now I've got the jump pack, not the new battery yet, but we'll just use that just to check charging. Uh, right, meter on DC. So you're gonna probe the output? No, I'm just gonna go straight to the battery. Oh, right, okay. See if it's charging. Just yeah, I'm not going to bother. Because the the new reg rec is in line now. Well, it's yeah, it's this live and earth on the yeah. battery is the same as the live and earth coming yeah. out of the regular rectifier. We've already established that, haven't we? So. Look at my voltmeter. Can you get in there? Can you see that? Thirteen volts fifty over. So that's a fix. So it needs a new battery, but that is, uh, it is now charging. So we've got a new battery as well. Again, a JMP, a Larson one. They're actually pretty good quality, these, and I'm not, I'm not trying to sell Larson stuff, but they're, they're not a lot of money, and they're pretty good quality. They seem to last. And they're half the price of a USO one. Okay. Uh, what do I need? I need coffee. Where is it? I tell you what, it's hard work. This. Oh, you know. This is. This is. This is the proper. This is. This is really <coughs> on the job now. <coughs> Let me spill my coffee. <coughs> ah. Right. Screwdriver. But 
Tada, yeah. Come out. Quicker than I did the other day. <laughs> yeah, they're fiddly, aren't they? Too tight. You were supposed to say, I land a jumbo jet in there. Yeah. Here you go, mate. I didn't think about it. <laughs> uh, make sure it's the right climbing one before we start filling it up with acid. So, here's a question. Oh. I mean, I know we haven't got to it yet, but you're just about to fill this up with acid. Yeah. Why do they not come with it? Uh, because it would probably be, in, it's been in storage for four years, probably. I mean, the power batteries just come, don't they? Mm, uh, no, not necessarily, when you buy them from a shop. Okay. I mean, if they're, if they're a gel type battery, then yeah, they're filled in the factory, but um, a lot of the, well, these AGM batteries, absorbed glass mat, right. which is what this is, when you buy it from the shop, they, they'll they fill it for you. Oh, right. You wouldn't have an AGM battery on the shelf for years without... Well, you might, yeah, maybe you would. But AGM batteries for bikes come with an acid pack. AGM? Absorbed glass mat. Mat as in material, right? Yeah. As in, what, what, See, what, what, what other kind of mat is the... Well, what are you thinking of? What mat? Door mat? No, no. And I know the next question is going to be, is it going to be charged? And the answer is no. And the other answer is, answer is charged enough. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing a... There's an argument for trickle charging it for... you got a trickle charger, Max. There's an argument for trickle charging it before you use the bike. Just give it an easy life to start with. But I've... Take it how much acid carries in there. Yeah, I've. Um, is it diluted? What's that? Is it diluted the acid? Or is it straight acid? I don't know the answer. Mm. I mean, it's electrolyte, whatever the concentration is. <laughs> yeah, only when you're topping it up though. Yeah. It's 41% acid. Mm. The specific gravity is. Can't read the writing, it's tiny. It's 41% sulfuric acid. Don't be tempted, right? Top tip. It's very tempting to start squeezing this and try and get the acid to go in quicker. The, the clue is in the name of the battery, AGM, absorbed glass mat. You know what I'm saying, Benji? I, I know what you're saying. So the acid needs to soak in. Right. So if you try and fill it too quick, it comes it squirting comes, out the top. You have acid everywhere. Yeah, so you just got to be not in a rush. So we've got a new battery in there, Benji. A new battery in there. Acid's in. Right. <laughs> what? Silenoid, silenoid back on. Okay. What's a solenoid for then? The solenoid, so basically it's a big heavy relay for the starter motor. So this big fat cable, see this one? Yeah. The positive cable comes straight from the battery into this side of the solenoid. See here? Yeah, right, okay. That's the battery, live this cable, and then this one goes straight to the starter motor. Right. And that's just a big relay to energise the start, basically connect the battery straight to the starter motor. Understood. Uh, right, contact. Like a new one. Uh, check easy charging.
Okay. Five. Something you've also got to pay attention to is overcharging. It doesn't happen very often, but the voltage <laughs> regulation bit of it, the regulator, rectifier, regulator rectifier can fail, and sometimes they can overcharge. You don't see it very often, but it does happen. And what's the what's the bad news with? Well, that? it just boils the battery dry. Right. Um, you can normally tell an overcharged battery is slightly swollen and misshapen. Don't see it so much these days for some reason. It used to be quite it used to be a thing back in the day. Obviously, the the design of the Regrex has changed. Maybe. Anyway, that's it. It's fixed. Put the tank on. Uh, yeah, it's done. Cool. That's that. Good work. A job in the wild. Question. Go on. Now that you replace the battery, yeah. What's the if you're going to keep it stood for a long time? What's the best way of keeping the uh, healthy? Disconnect the battery. Yeah. If you can during the you're talking like storing it over winter time. Yeah. If you can disconnect the well disconnect the battery, brim the fuel tank. So there's no way condensation can form. If you can drain the float bowls in the carbs, if you can't drain the float bowls in the carbs, put some fuel stabilizer in the fuel and run it until the you know run it for 10 15 minutes so the, the stabilized fuel is in the carbs if you can't drain them. Like a bike like this, look look down here. There's a float, see these see here on the carburetor? There's a drain screw there for the float yep. ball. And they're really easy to get out on an unfaired bike like this. So you would disconnect the battery, drain the float balls on the carbs, fill the tank to the top, and don't don't run it. Just leave it alone. Um, I get a lot of calls this time of the year. To be honest, I thought it might have been the issue with yours when you say it wouldn't go. Um, if you start them and let them tick over, people seem to think it's a good idea to, oh, I'll run it every fortnight. Um, they start them up, just let them tick over on, you know, till the fan comes on and they turn them off and put them away again. You do that repeatedly over and over and over and over again without actually getting it properly to temperature as in riding along, you end up fouling the plugs and then you go to, re go to start it one day and it's misfiring and coughing and banging and yeah, you're better off just not starting it at all. So the battery oh, disconnected for, for an extended period won't bugger it then? No. Make sure it's fully charged, disconnect it. Ideally, if you can, if, you, if your garage is freezing cold, take the battery off, take it in the house. Right. You know, so it's not getting minus temperatures over and over again. But a, a AGM battery like that will, you know, over the course of six months, I don't know what the, they're rated, they, they'll discharge an amount over a certain period of time. And depending on the quality of the battery, some will discharge quicker than others, but yeah, if you can take it off take it in the house if you've got a warm garage then just disconnect either the earth or the positive doesn't matter and just just leave it alone yeah. Yeah, problem with that, actually, with fuel. it lives brilliant do you, want me to you put your saddle back on again oh uh, yeah of course yeah Please. you're right with that uh Right with that cover, aren't you? Putting that cover over the battery. Yeah, I've got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Put it back on there. Yeah, yeah. Easy. Okay. Yeah, it will go on. Yeah. Do you want me to push it in there for you? Yeah. 